uh, I'm running the fund of funds with Centrifuge. I was uh, worked with, with Dove um, at Blue Chip Venture Company for about nine years. Entrepreneur by background, double E trained. Um, started Share This QCAs, an investor in Share This, uh, which is now headquartered in Palo Alto, and um, they have offices in San Francisco and LA and Chicago and New York. Reach 700 million people around the world every month. Uh, grew from zero to 50 million in revenue in about four years. Have raised about 60 million dollars, <coughs> and I need an exit soon. And so do you. <laughs> uh, and uh, also an investor in QCA, and and was at, at Blue Chip when um, uh, Tony was running Intech IRD and sold that and, and helped get this started. So have a bit of history with that. So Stefan. I'm Stefan Antonson. I've been in the pharmaceutical industry for about 30 years. Uh, what brought me to the area was in 1995, I left uh, Forest Labs, was managing about $100 million in business and marketing for them, and joined Richwood, which in the small world category, Blue Chip was an investor in Richwood. Richwood was a, a venture-backed company based in Florence, Kentucky. We launched Adderall and took that from uh, to sales of, well, you know, n sales in 95 were about $5 million, and we took Adderall itself up to about $400 million in about a, a five-year period. We were then acquired by Shire. Um, I joined um, uh, QCA in 2009, have made a, a, a number, probably about 15 investments, or maybe closer to 20 investments with QCA, and I'll talk a little bit about those from the life science perspective later. Hi, uh, I'm Dove Rosenberg. I'm a partner at Allos Ventures. Uh, we're an early stage venture capital firm, offices here in Cincinnati and Indianapolis. Uh, we invest primarily in B2B software. Um, so Allos was essentially a spin out from Blue Chip Ventures, uh, where Tim and I worked together um, going back to 2005, I think I joined Blue Chip. Um, and so it's a continuation of what was then the Blue Chip strategy of uh, investing in high potential early stage, but you know, companies with revenue, you know, our average company has about a million dollars of revenue, uh, and primarily B2B software companies, uh, so selling, selling in enterprises and you know, companies in the mid Midwest. So um, you know, we cover sort of Chicago to Nashville, St. Louis to Pittsburgh. Uh, you know, so we have, while well, we, we see some deals outside that region, that's, that's where we invest and we have pretty good coverage there, so we can provide some perspective on you know, what the other venture firms in this part of the world are, are looking for. Great. So the, uh, the headline here is where the opportunities are today and, and how to think about those. And uh, often we, um, yeah, we'll, we'll reference Scott. I'm trying to figure out which where the slides were. Which some the other direction. Both directions didn't see it. <laughs> so there's sort of the national perspective, right, in terms of what's happening uh, nationally as well as uh, what we have within the region. So we have a few different slides we'll rotate through as we talk. We're not talking specifically to them, but. Uh, we, we're, as Wendy mentioned, the, the Green Monster, that big board, partly is an effort to understand where are the opportunities here locally, um, and what, what, what's the approach that you want to take to understanding where those opportunities are. We're still, to some degree, trying to um, understand where does Cincinnati play above its weight class from an investment standpoint, right? Uh, is there a category specifically uh, of companies and startups where Cincinnati really shines? and that's not necessarily stood out yet. Um, I think that's that's emerging. Uh, much of what we see is what what you'd see on a national basis in terms of the uh, heavy dominance of software and technology versus healthcare. Uh, Ten funds Wendy um, mentioned that we invested in are predominantly in the software technology uh, and the media space. Um, we. We haven't finalized, but the tenth fund that we committed to is a full uh, healthcare fund, life science fund, and we spent a lot of time trying to find the right life sciences fund nationally that would have some good overlap here that understands the nuances of that market. So, um, so Stefan, while we're talking about life sciences, can you can you um, talk about what you're seeing and how you think about that market broadly? First of all. Well, one thing I want to notice is that I noticed life science didn't show up on the board at all before that Wendy was putting up, so I thought that was kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. Looking at it from our perspective, from a QCA perspective, about uh, just over 30% of the investments in QCA on a dollar basis are in bioscience or life science, uh, affiliated with healthcare in, in some way. Uh, and that's been pretty consistent with a uh, a high, I think, of in the you know mid mid 30s to a low of uh, just under 30 percent. 
So roughly a third of the money is going in there. Um, and, you know, it's, we'll get to those slides later, but it's really across a whole range of different um, um, segments. Uh, there's a m number of medical device companies that we've invested in. Uh, there's a, some pharmaceutical products that we've invested in, some pharmaceutical companies. There's health IT. Um, there, there tend to be a couple of core elements that are similar. They, they emanate from one of the universities with the original idea, or say a number have come from Cincinnati Children's. It's identifying a specific entrepreneur, a manager that we can lead that business around. It's not just the idea, it comes back to that core, who's the business person, who's gonna take and, and commercialize or, 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 or market this idea. Um, and you know we've had uh, uh, a number of, of successes there and uh, I'd say the biggest challenge though often is identifying who can lead that from a, uh, who can lead that business from the, the business perspective not the technology and, and that's one of the, the challenges we've had as we've talked to healthcare firms is we have a lot of great science in the region at Cincinnati Children's at UC et cetera, but finding the entrepreneur to pair with that company is where we we need help Right, and so um, what we see is like a number of Boston venture firms who source the technology uh, at the very earliest stage from institutions around the country and around the world, but then they, they have a stable of EIRs, right? They're executives and residents, CEOs in waiting, and they, they match them up, and oftentimes that headquarters ends up in Boston, right? And so uh, you see a lot of that. And so we're trying to figure out how we can start to break through that. So, you know, one action item from that I would say um, is, you know, if you have in any of your networks, you know, people that I call boomerangs, people that grew up here, or from here, from the area that moved out to the coast that are ready to come back. Typically, those are people that have, you know, been out of school only five to seven years because they start to have a family and they they remember how good it is to be in Cincinnati. But and wherever they are in their life cycle. Um, Make them aware of what's happening, right? Share what's happening with, with uh, Centrifuge and um, you know, send them our way. Uh, the, uh, the number one reason why I've seen when we've done CEO recruiting in the blue chip days and since is people love the idea. They may love the science, they love the idea, they love we show them around what, what you know, their money can buy them in Hyde Park or Indian Hill or something like that. And then ultimately they might say no, and oftentimes the reason for saying no is they don't think there's a rich enough startup culture. Like if this one doesn't work, What's the next deal that I could do? Well, that's changing because of all these things you just heard about today. So that's one action. Is there um, another type of action or suggestion you'd make to kind of take on that challenge? Um, the challenge of enumerating. Teaming up, teaming up to, to pull that technology, sure. to pull the IP out. Well, you know, it's interesting. Uh, th there are all also hidden assets here, or uh, I think they're hidden to a lot of people. Not many people know that, say, Cincinnati is a hotbed for clinical research organizations. These are commercial-based organizations that are hired by large and small companies to actually conduct the trials. Uh, we have MedPace, which is growing. It's very large. It's done extremely well, co concentrates in a couple of areas. And they are actually bringing in lots of people from across the country and building that up. Um, MedPace may be the, the one that's recognized the most, but there's another company called Camargo Pharmaceutical Services that tends to focus on um, um, not, not necessarily the most, the newest molecules, but finding new purposes for existing molecules. And then finally, there's another company called CTI. So, Here's one niche area, clinical research organizations, that Cincinnati is very strong in, that does provide kind of a, a connection and a glue for, for starting companies that not a lot of people are aware of. And they're tending to bring in and attract people to the area that have a technical background in life sciences. And we've, we've had that also on the medical device side with Ethicon. Right? Absolutely. A long history there. Yep. Uh, the, um, so understanding where those pockets of expertise are, and trying to leverage them and finding the entrepreneurs to pair with them, which may come from some of the big organizations in town or out of town, is is a, a big opportunity for us. It's a challenge, but it's also the opportunity. Um, so, Dove, talking about where Allos is looking now, where you where you are seeing the most deal growth. Sure. Uh, so, you know, I mentioned our, our geography earlier, and, and our, our deal flow comes you know throughout that region, and 
There's about 14 markets, sort of Cincinnati-like markets, you know, that are covered by that geography. Um, and each one is, you know, they tend to be very similar. All of these states have um, state tax credits or other startup funding programs um, that are helping to prompt more startup activity. You know, each city has an accelerator or, or two accelerators. They've got an, uh, their own version of Queen City Angels. None of them look quite the same, right? They're all a little bit different, um, different sizes, different approaches. Uh, but it's created an enormous amount of startup activity, and they're at different stages in their lives as well. So we see, um, you know, a city like Pittsburgh that was well ahead of Cincinnati historically in terms of the startup environment. Um, you know, and and now, you know, through for whatever reasons, you know, their venture, some of the venture firms based there have moved to later stage. Some of their uh, tax burdens, I think, have gone away, and so now we see Pittsburgh sort of falling at the same time that Cincinnati has really come on strong over the last five years or so. Um, so geographically, you know, mo I would say that most activity in this region is coming from uh, Indianapolis, uh, Cleveland, and particularly life science uh, things coming out of the Cleveland Clinic. Um, Southern Michigan has a lot of IT uh, going on at the moment, uh, and then certainly Chicago, you know, just it's Chicago, so it's a lot of everything. Um, and then Cincinnati has really been coming out strong, particularly in the IT space um, over the last five years or so, you know, the efforts of Cincy Tech and Queen City Angels um, to fund some of those companies. Uh, in, in terms of the types of companies that we're seeing, you know, industry-wise, uh, I think analytics is probably the, you know, the largest single area that we're starting to see uh, more deal flow. And it, people describe it in different ways, right? You know, talk about big data, um, or talk about business intelligence, right? But it's really capability to take data and turn it into meaning. And we're seeing it across industries. You know, we we tend to view ourselves as software generalists, right? So we're not we don't care so much about what a software company is selling into, right? Are they selling to restaurants? Are they selling to hospitals, right? It's more about how do you build a software platform? And so we're seeing analytics play in all those different spaces. Um, you know, healthcare IT is certainly hot, um, but also, you know, enabling small and medium businesses to do things with data that they, you know, they never had the ability to do before because your know, computation was so expensive. Um, you know, with cloud computing, a lot of those problems go away. Um, and you know, in terms of Cincinnati strengths, you know, one of the things we've been talking about internally lately is uh, historically we've looked at Cincinnati as sort of a B to C. You know, we have a lot of consumer expertise, right? We have you know, obviously Procter and Gamble and Kroger and Macy's, um, Nielsen and Dunhumby. Um, but the other way to spin all that is what we really have is analytics expertise, right? That uh, while the analytics today tend to be focused on consumers, right, and understanding how consumers are going to behave. You know, there are a lot of statisticians, a lot of data scientists, a lot of people who understand what you can do with data that are buried in all of these organizations I just mentioned, right, that have the ability to come out and start something interesting, you know, maybe consumer focused or maybe something else entirely. And that's a great example of um, uh, tying back to healthcare too and tying these together around consumer insights. Yes. Uh, the first year or so with, with Centrifuge, we're trying to figure out how do we, again, how do we define the region, what's that expertise, and we have you know, estimated 57,000 people that are involved in market research and, and consumer insights. It's not necessarily just marketing. Assurex is a big data consumer insights company at the end of the day, right? And so there could be a great opportunity on the healthcare side. Mm -hmm. so can you talk a little bit about that and how that data, healthcare, life sciences starts to come together and where we should look for opportunities here? Yeah, I mean, we have one specific investment in QCA that's uh, a MediCheck. It's a healthcare IT company. It's, it's focused on medication adherence or a kind of medication reminder system. Uh, one of the big issues is that, uh, and one of the missed opportunities that so many patients, even if they get the right diagnosis, even if they get the right treatment, they often just don't remember to take the treatment. So there's a negative outcome for the patient, patient and it's a huge missed opportunity for, for all the companies that have developed those products. So that's one particular area where there's that, that convergence that was, that of data. Great. And we, we talked early on when we were fundraising, we talked to Eli Lilly over in Indianapolis, right? And this is just when we get the fund of funds started. And they said, look, you're not going to invest in better life science venture firms than we do. Like, we know molecules. We know the best molecule investors, et cetera, et cetera. But they said, we're not, we're not investing like one iota on the consumer behavior component of it. 